Hi there folks, now this week's video is going to be slightly different in format uh, than the recent videos we've been putting out. We've been putting out lots of educational video content, which has been great, great fun doing. I'm getting a lot of really good feedback as well. Today I want to talk to you a little bit more about me, uh, basically how I got to where I am today. That's basically a full-time trader and of course trading educator. My life started off very, very different than where it is today. So I thought I'd talk to you a, bit, a little about where I came from, how I got into this position and the similarities between the, the before life and now the after life, as it were. And there's a bit of a pun in there as well, if anyone knows what I'm talking about. Basically, I started my trading career back um, straight out of school. That's over 30 years ago now. I walked uh, straight into the London Stock Exchange as a junior. Uh, I was a junior trader on the floor there. In fact, I was a, um, an apprentice market maker, stock jobber, we used to call them in those days, on the UK government bond pitch. I spent a couple of years there, and then I swiftly moved on into the Futures Trading Exchange. It was known as the Life Floor, there's your pun, L-I-F-F-E, stands for the London International Financial Futures Exchange. Now, you may have seen this on television in the past, uh, certainly on certain films like Trading Places with Eddie Murphy, I think it was. There we were, all with our coloured jackets. This is one of my coloured jackets. Every jacket that you had, basically, uh, was representing the company you were working for. We used to uh, place our trades uh, with other members in the trading pits just by shouting and screaming at each other. Put our trades on these cards there. They've got themselves there, and you've got your buyers on the other side, and then would throw them back into the trade into the uh, into the booth where the uh, the runners would basically match the trades in the system. This was what was known as open outcry. So we did that for about 20 years, throwing literally um, around hundreds of thousands of dollars on a daily basis, company money for most of the time. Two types of traders really on the on the life floor. You had the corporate bond, uh, corporate traders, that's basically working for companies. You also had local traders uh, where you're basically trading your own money. Normally you'd have a red jacket there or something. Now I was actually a local trader for a number of years as well. So I've done basically both. Open outcry basically uh, changed in about 2000. All the exchanges around the world were becoming electronic. Um, and the UK life market closed down, I think it was around uh, 2001. I moved out uh, of the UK in about 2000, went over to Singapore, where the open outcry exchanges were still very much flourishing. Um, but we knew it was happening, so I went out there and I was working with the Singapore Stock Exchange for a while, uh, assisting them in their migration from the open outcry uh, to the electronic screens uh, that we have today. Roll on 2005. I'm back here in the UK deciding what I should do with the rest of my career. All I've ever done for the last 20 years plus is trading. So I thought, well, I've got to get back into trading somehow. The, ra the rage at the time, of course, was all this electronic trading, people trading from their homes in spread betting here in the UK and so forth, all taking off. So I thought I'd chance my arm at that. I all realized that this was not the same as it used to be. It was vastly different. So today I'm gonna to talk about the main differences and what I've learned from them. First off, the big difference is the fact that when you're in a trading pit, standing around lots of other traders, there's lots of other traders to bounce your ideas off. It's much more sociable. Stuck here on the trading screens, it can be very, very lonely. And with that loneliness, you end up taking trades and taking risks that you maybe shouldn't be taking through boredom. And that is a big, big problem that I think many traders find on the screens today. They're trading because they're bored with other things going on in their lives, so they think they'll put some excitement into it and they start trading the markets. A bit like gambling, really, isn't it? That's why gambling is one of the big um, industries now across the world. Every sporting event you see on a Saturday here in the UK, there's gambling companies advertised all over the place because it's exciting. So a lot of traders have come in here now, they're bored with their everyday life and they start thinking they'll trade the markets and they end up losing lots of money. And back on the life floor, of course, it was very different. You're standing around lots of other traders. If nothing's going on, well, you have a chat, you go to lunch, you uh, socialize with the other traders. It's not so lonely. So you're not so compelled to be making these unnecessary trades. I'm pretty sure that if I look back uh, to 2005, 2006, I would say about 95% of the trades that I was taking, certainly the vast majority of the trades that I was taking uh, in those days, which made me um, you know, lose quite a lot of money, 
were unnecessary trades, trades that weren't really following a plan. Now, I didn't keep a journal in those days. I wish I had done. Um, they've all gone now. That's money down the drain to a certain extent because I didn't actually uh, have anything to look back on uh, and to see where I was going wrong. But I certainly know that I didn't have a, uh, a strategy, any defined reasons why I was entering a trade. I thought, you know, the days of looking in people's eyes, you know, deciding when the market was going up by looking the fear in people's eyes, well, that had gone. I'm now looking at candlesticks on the chart and it's just a very, very different uh, form of analysis. I did actually uh, hatch a strategy out of my days of the trading floor. I had to think back to what was working at the time. And I remember one guy in particular, I won't mention his name now in case he's listening in, uh, but he was like a middle-aged, uh, well, I thought he was middle-aged at the time, a uh, trader, never wore a training jacket used to just wear um you know a normal suited jacket he had all the rolex watches and um and so forth um but he wasn't very active um he'd only come into the trading pits maybe a couple of times a week two or three times a week maybe um normally when he found an optimum moment and that normally came at the end of a big big violent move in one particular direction now in those days you used to be able to listen to the volume and the noise and the crescendo of shouting and screaming as the markets were trending normally he would walk in when the markets started to dissipate after a really big wild event and then he would just come in and reverse uh, the market and take everyone out with him as well and everyone's scrambling there to take profits and so forth i actually hatched our naked trading strategy on the back of that uh, of that guy and i think the other difference um that I found, certainly when I came onto the screens in 2005, is if you're having a bad day, if you're losing it, if you're losing hemorrhaging money, uh, generally on the trading floor, everyone knew about it. It was visual, visible to everyone else in the trading pits. Here on the screens, you're having a bad day, you know, with your mouse flicking away, taking trades willy-nilly, then the only person that really knows about your horrendous day is you. And maybe you take it out on your family um, after the trading day. But on the trading pits, if you're having a bad day, if you're making a fool of yourself with your trading, everyone knows about it. So you're less compelled to make a fool of yourself. You're much more uh, likely to be remain disciplined um, because if you're, as I say, misbehaving in the trading pits, everyone knows about it. So I thought that was a big, big difference. Now I think it's fair to say that we all know that the biggest component of a successful trader is the psychology. You've often maybe heard me talk about it in the past of that triangle. Uh, that the strategy maybe is only 10%, the psychology is the bulk of it, maybe 70%, and then risk management maybe uh, 20% or so. Um, but psychology certainly is the big factor. And when you're sitting here on the screens, it is different. It is different, and we're all affected by the psychology, the common, the common emotions, the fear, the greed, and so forth. And I think that's much more intense when you're sitting here on a screen on your own. So you need to be in control. Um, of these emotions. Very difficult. Um, mo you know, money is an emotional commodity after all, but there are certain things that you can do to control your emotions. And the first thing, clearly, is to have a defined strategy, a strategy written down, written down with a checklist. I've discussed that in many videos in the past, that you're only taking those trades when your checks are, are, are ticked off. And of course, this strategy has to be back tested so you know all the uh, the ins and outs of the strategy you know how it's likely to perform what the a good period looks like what a drawdown period looks like as well so that when you do experience those that you're not basically surprised by it and you carry on with the way uh, you're going because you've seen it happen there in the past so as i say money is an emotional commodity it's very difficult to control the emotions but there are certain things that you can do to control them and those are just a few as well but of course you do need a strategy 2005 i didn't really have a strategy i was trading out on a wing and a prayer thinking this is going up this is going down i'd also take revenge trades i'll tell you something if you did a revenge trade in the trading pits before you were soon laughed out of the trading pit if you started getting angry with the market or getting angry with other traders because they were buying and you were selling and they had more buying power than you you started getting angry and frustrated and red-faced. Well, the whole pit knew about it pretty quickly and you were pretty much laughed out of the market as well. So be aware of that. Be aware of the emotions as well. One of the big advantages, I think, of trading here on the screens, though, um, is the fact that you have, I think, more control if you trade properly um, over your risk. In the trading pits, Literally, you know, we all have stops, mental stops, or we'd have stops written on our trading card where we're going to exit a certain position or our, um, our bank might have told us to uh, sell at a certain level. You know, that would be a stop. We'd be sitting there on the cards. 
and hit that label, then you'd basically execute and activate your stop. But sometimes there was literally nothing in the market. Sometimes you wouldn't take the stop. You think, oh no, maybe I'll just give it another two or three pips. With the electronic trading, you can place your stop in, place your stop in and forget about it. If that triggers, then you are starting to sell the market. So it's much easier to control your risk. When you're placing a trade on the electronic trading platforms, you can establish your risk as you place the trade. If you're risking half percent or one uh, percent or whatever it is, I suggest you use much more than one percent. I like to stick to about a quarter to a half percent on each trade. But you can establish that risk at the moment you place the trade. We couldn't do that in the trading pits. And basically, we were trading with mental stops and trading with mental stops. Well, we all know what that's about. You need to have your stops in there. And of course, even on the screens, you may get slipped on some of your stops as well. So it's never going to be uh, foolproof but it's much easier, uh, I think, to control uh, the risk uh, on the electronic trading platforms. Fear and anxiety. One of the biggest common emotional problems that many tra uh, traders suffer for, uh, certainly in all walks of life, be it on the floor or indeed on the, uh, on the screens here. But on the trading uh, floor, it was, I think, less because you're with other people. You're with other traders, you can discuss things, you can get ideas off them. And a problem shared, as they say, is a problem halved. When you're sitting here on the screens, fear and anxiety can be really, really intense. So you need to be aware of that. And that's one of the reasons, I think, why I think it's important that uh, traders are in some community where they are sharing ideas, sharing experiences with other traders. One of the reasons, of course, why we established our trading community here at ForexSignals.com. We've always got about three or 400 traders in the room at any one time discussing opportunities and, and sharing their problems and so forth. So it's a great way to basically ease those emotions of fear and anxiety by being inside a trading community. And as I mentioned a moment ago, the uh, naked trading strategy was hatched basically by copying what successful traders were doing. Very easy on the floor to see what the successful trader was doing, to see certainly who the successful traders were just by looking at the way they lived their lives, the cars, the watches, the uh, flash parties that they were uh, always hosting. Copying what they were doing was also a big advantage of being on the trading floor. But also being inside a community, you can see the traders that are doing well, copying their traders, not their trades, but copying the way they go about their trading. Copy trading is never going to make you rich full time by copying a signal, but seeing what traders are doing, seeing how they behave, seeing how they cope with losing trades, that is very, very important. And that's another reason why I think it's a big advantage of being inside a trading room. So you can see the traits of a successful trader. Being stuck there on your own with your laptop, maybe a couple of screens, very difficult to actually emulate the successful trader. You're basically on your own. Well, you don't have to be, of course. You can always join a community uh, such as ours. So I fairly recommend you do something like that even if you want to take a trial out and check it out for yourself. And on the subject of looking at other traders to try and emulate their success, looking at other traders and not wanting to be like them is also another big advantage of being in a community. Sometimes we see the odd individual in the community that basically, you know, you know he's in trouble, you know he's actually going down the wrong path. Of course, we try to get them right and put them back on track, but you can see that inside the community. And you did on the trading pits as well. You can see someone that was big, big in trouble. In fact, it used to be quite comical sometimes when you saw a trader coming in, normally a novice trader that would be on trying to take on the market, trying to take on Goldman Sachs or something with his small little account, and then getting blown out and literally carried out of the exchange floor on occasions. Of course, it was all fun and games at the time. He had a great laugh seeing a trader literally being carried out of the trading pits by his clearing member. Uh, basically, he basically lost all his money. Um, so you saw it visibly there. Sometimes you see it in the trading community as well with people taking trades. You think, well, you're doing that wrong and you've got something. But as I say, we do try to put them back on the straight and narrow. That's obviously what uh, the other members are doing and also the fellow mentors here um, at the community. And that's me. Here I am now on the screens. Been trading for 35 years. I'm now trading, carving out an income uh, successfully in total control of risk management, total realistic expectations. I'm looking for four to five percent a month, easily achievable if you know how. And also I'm now educating, of course, uh, other traders inside the trading room, mentoring them as well. We've got some really experienced traders in there as well. But I think, doesn't matter who you are, whether you're a professional athlete, sports person or what have you, having a mentor uh, there to keep you on the straight and narrow is very, very important. As I say, it doesn't matter how successful you are. Look at Tiger Woods, look at Roger Federer, the tennis player. He's got coaches, they've all got coaches, they've all got mentors to keep them on the straight and narrow. 
come over, check it out if that is your thing. Okay, so I'm off on holiday now for the next couple of weeks, so no videos out from me. Um, but I'll be back, as I say, in a couple of weeks' time, and we'll continue with the educational content. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel now, and that bell notification, well, you know what that does. It will notify you when I am back and when I'm putting out more video content, so you don't want to miss that. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. It does help the ratings, apparently, um, so I'm told. Don't forget to follow us on all the socials as well. Leave a comment as well. Let me know if you've come from a period of uh, losing and uh, are now uh, successful, or maybe the other way around. Hopefully, it is the former, not the latter. Okay, well, that's about it. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Stay safe.